OK, so this is one neuron. Now, of course, we would like to expand that a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to simplify this image a little bit. Basically, I'm going to turn into that. But keep in mind the Ws, the B, and this nonlinear function are still there. OK, they, they didn't disappear. They are still there. But just I, I removed them just to make things easier to draw. And again, keep in mind, I didn't tell you yet how we find out how we compute the Ws and the Bs. That will come later in uh, in the session okay so if we try we can think that okay now we have one neuron why not have two neurons and so that would look like that we would have here another neuron next to the first one now we have two outputs okay and uh, maybe what we can do is go even further maybe we can say all right i want to add some of those w's and those b's so i add some arrows and now in the middle i have this kind of layer the blue layer here and this is what we call a hidden layer why hidden because in an ai model you can measure the inputs you can measure the outputs but what's going on inside the model is very difficult to measure uh, it is like a black box okay it's a hidden layer and so now we have a, a system with one layer but why not add more layers? And so again, I'm going to simplify the notation by replacing all those arrows with some little X's. And then data scientists work very often uh, by trial and error, okay? So they are going to try some things, they're going to check if it works well. And one thing that they did is that they said, hey, let's try to add layers. So now this, a blue layer in the middle imagine that you have many more and we have what we call a deep neural network and so now you can imagine the number of arrows and of w's and of b's that we have there it's really a lot 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 of factors okay and uh, to give you an idea about the depth of a neural network we work routinely with 12 layers 18 layers uh, the cognitive services which are uh, ai models exposed on microsoft azure uh, as an api so something that you can call as a developer to, to get results, for example, custom vision, speech recognition, etc. Those have uh, up to 50 layers, okay? So this is quite a deep neural network. You can imagine how much time it takes to train those uh, systems. Cool, so we have that. Now I'd like to also take just a moment to talk about activation function. Remember the nonlinear function that we had, because again, those are terms that you will hear if you do some uh, AI training, and that can be interesting to understand. So uh, one possible activation function that is used sometimes is called a sigmoid function. This is uh, the formula that we have here uh, on the left-hand side, and it looks like that. I literally went into Excel and I drew this graph. I was pretty proud of myself. Uh, and what you can see is that it's going to deliver an output between zero and one. OK, so whatever the input is, it's always going to deliver an output between zero and one. So that can be useful uh, because zero and one is like zero, zero percent and 100 percent. So it can be interesting to normalize the output of a neuron. Another function that is often used is called a rectified linear unit. And this is called a ReLU. Sometimes they call it also a half ramp because this is how it looks like. And interestingly, this function works well also as an activation function. And again, it's very much trial and error. OK, we try a function, try another function, and the one that gives the best result is going to be uh, used more. And so if you go into AI uh, and machine learning, you will see a lot of those terms ReLU. So this is what it means, rectified linear unit or half ramp function. Um, so that's uh, that's interesting to know. 